Good morning. Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church this beautiful June 6th Sunday, this wonderful hot weekend. My goodness, how hot it has been. We have just a few announcements this morning. First of all, to thank our broadcast, uh, the funds for our radio and online broadcast this week are in memory of Winifred Giese, uh, and given by her daughters, Patty and Wendy. So we thank them so much for their contribution. And we welcome our online folks this morning. Good morning. This is our return to summer worship time, which for Grace is normal, but that means that Providence Valley is also meeting at 9, and so that's why Kendall is not here. We'll be switching off every Sunday for the rest of the summer, and I'm so pleased to be with you today. We're also returning to our normal patterns for communion, so as you all are welcome at the table, and as you choose to come forward today, you will either grab your cup for grape for the wine or your pre-filled cup for grape juice and find your place along the rail and you may choose to kneel or stand and we'll continue and move on. Um, we're also going to be using our red books again, the ELW, so we'll have our liturgy and we can follow along in the hymnal together. And that will be a fun thing to get started again, I think but I like singing. A couple other announcements are on your back, on the back of your bulletin today, so take a look at all of those. I, of course, want to um, highlight the grief group. We are starting again. It's a completely new cycle for the Persevering Love grief group, and we're going to try meeting Monday evenings during June, starting tomorrow night, and this week we will be exploring the myth the goal of mourning is to get over it. So we'll use scripture to explore what are the truths about that piece of grief, grief and loss. For now, let us open our hearts and minds and prepare for worship. Stand, greet one another, greet our online members, and we'll get started.
the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please pray with me. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for our sin, and for his sake God forgives all of our sins. As a, call, as a called minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the community of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, all-powerful God, in Jesus Christ you turn death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him that we may triumph over all evil in strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading. First lesson is from Ezekiel, chapter 17, verses 22 through 24. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree, I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken, I will accomplish it. The second lesson is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 through 10, 11, 13, and 14 through 17. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel this morning is from the book of Mark, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes out with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, what can we compare, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all seeds on the earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs 
and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace in the name of Jesus. Amen. I wish you could be up here and smell these peonies. They're lovely. Side note. <laughs> Today is the day I graduate from seminary, and as I'm in a reflective mood, Jesus has me thinking about planting. Um, Y'all, my thumb is not green, and while I know the basics of horticulture, taking a plant from seed to fruit has not been a great gift of mine. This summer, I really wanted to grow some zucchini because I know it tends to grow well up here, and it's a vegetable I use quite often in my own cooking. So, in early May, I purchased everything I needed. I got a little starter tray to plant the seeds in, the starter soil, and of course the seeds themselves. I read all of the instructions on the packet to make sure I followed the directions. I saw that they got enough sun and watered them each day. And within a couple of weeks, I had a small little crop of three-inch-high baby zucchini plants growing in my living room. They were happy, healthy, and shooting up a little bit each day. Then I took them outside. It should have been warm enough. It wasn't quite as hot as it is today yet. But still, they wilted and just would not be coaxed back to life. Now, this is not my first failed attempt to grow a thing. It, each um, of my experiences have given me a new and renewed respect for farmers and gardeners alike, really. Any of you who have these skills are pretty amazing in my book if you can actually get plants to grow to fruit. Now, if you are one of these people, you may think it's silly to receive such accolades because conceptually, growing a plant from seed is fairly simple. Every plant needs water, sun, nutrients, and space to grow, and all of that is pretty basic. Yet, there's so much that goes into the process. There are environmental bits, like what type of soil is appropriate? Which time of year is best for planting each type of plant? How deep does the seed need to be planted? How much space do they need to mature? And when and how much do you water? And that's just the beginning of the list. To truly be successful at growing something, you have to understand and deeply care about the specific needs of your plant, from seed to harvest. Then, even with that knowledge, understanding, and caring, things can go wrong. In the first part of the gospel today, Jesus makes it sound kind of easy, just like tossing some seed out the window and going to sleep is going to miraculously grow wheat over time. So as someone who has tried the scatter and walk away method, I will say that for most plants, this does not work well. On the other hand, this passage from Mark is one of Jesus' parables. And I actually do have plants growing around my house right now that I didn't put in the ground, but just miraculously popped up this spring. So perhaps the story is worth a closer look. Now the flowers and ground cover and vines currently flourishing in my yard did not appear of magic. Of course, they are perennial plants, which are still kind of miraculous in the way they regenerate after being dormant in the ground all winter. But that is just how God created those plants to work. Even with their regenerating powers, perennials had to be planted at some point, and they still need proper care to survive throughout the hot summer. To really get at what Jesus is talking about in this parable, we're going to have to look beyond literal plants, I believe. So what else do we sow? As an educator, my mind naturally gravitates toward knowledge and ideas. We humans are often sharing bits of knowledge with one another, especially with those younger than us, and we hope that the lessons that we share take root. In addition to the practical lessons, we also sow seeds of positivity and affirmation. It might be something as simple as a smile or a compliment, 
or if you're on social media, clicking the like button on Facebook. Or sometimes the gestures take a little bit more thought and planning, mailing a greeting card or attending an event celebrating a milestone in a friend's life. It's amazing how these tiny mustard seeds of a gesture that may seem inconsequential to you can be the very thing that tips the scale to motivate the recipient to move the mountain that's been standing between them and their goal. But just like the seeds planted in the ground, sharing knowledge, ideas, affirmation, and blessing are wonderful on their own, but once sown, they need tending in order for them to grow. I'd like to share my friendship with my friend Renee as an example today. Now, Renee and I weren't even really friends at first. She and I met through one of the small groups at my church when I was living and teaching in North Houston, and I joined that church back in about 2013. For two years, I was aware of Renee as a nice person and fellow member of my Bible study group and, and social group, but I didn't know her well beyond that. In 2015, I left my, my teaching career and took a summer internship as the youth minister at a congregation south of Houston to get some experience working at a church and to further discern the call I felt to full-time ministry. My next steps weren't quite in place after the summer was over, and I found myself in need of a temporary place to live. Now, Renee is divorced, and she has extra room in her house, and when she heard about my need, even though she didn't know me very well, because of our church connections, she offered what she had to me. I was able to stay at her house for one-third of the rent for an apartment in that same area, and not only did she let me use that room, she shared her entire house with me. And now for the record, that's a pretty big seed to sow, and I don't expect all of you to open up your homes in that way, but let me just keep going. So Renee and I share her house for what ends up being a full year. And throughout that time, we led our separate lives, but also shared meals and conversation and generally got to know each other. That year, I learned that Renee is the type of person who spends time with her parents and family, not because she has to, but because it is what she loves to do. She loves them and wants to spend time with them. She is the friend who sends thoughtful cards to family and friends. She hosts holiday parties and game nights, is active in her church, and in general, shows the world around her that she cares about them through her kind words and actions. That year, she was the kind and supportive presence that I needed as I decided to follow the call into the unknown, applied for seminary in the candidacy process, and prepared to move across the country up to St. Paul. Then throughout this seminary journey, she has maintained that encouragement by sending care packages and cards, making an effort to meet up for a meal when I'm home, and posting the occasional comment on my Facebook posts. I actually received a graduation card from her this week, and especially when I felt a little bit down about my virtual ceremony, that congratulatory note made my day. Now, I use Renee as an example, but she is only one of many whose lessons and love have been meaningful in my life. Each kind and encouraging word act or lesson, when taken together, adds to a whole garden of nourishment and encouragement that has carried me through these past few years. Turning back to my garden, my first attempt at growing zucchini was only partially successful. Even though I'm a bit discouraged by my failed first try, I'm brave enough to start again, and I'm planting some more zucchini seeds this weekend. Hopefully, what I learned from my first crop will help me reach a more fruitful outcome on this second attempt. But regardless, there will be a lesson to glean from this attempt, even if the new plants themselves do not bear fruit. And I will continue to learn and take those lessons with me. In the meantime, I will enjoy the blessing of the perennial flowers that were planted by someone else and do my best to tend for, to them so that they live and bloom again for the next intern. 
Beloved, do the same for, to care for your, the people in your life, as I know you already do. There are so many times that you will never know what grows from the little seeds of kindness that you share and spread. But I hope that that won't deter you from making the effort anyway, because the little bitty things can make the big difference, and it's always worth our effort to be kind. Amen. We continue with our confession and faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We please stand as you're able. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, his incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us come before our triune God in prayer. Jesus, you say that even those of us with a small amount of faith have the ability to move mountains, yet some obstacles in our lives still feel too heavy. Share your strength, God, and help us find the way through. Lord, in your mercy. The sun shines hot these days, Lord, and while crops need that light and warmth, they also need rain so that they are refreshed and the nourishment of the soil can seep in. We pray for a balance of sun and rain this season and look forward with hope to a bountiful harvest. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Judge of nations, we pray for our leaders and those in power. Grant them the ability to regard those under their charge with humility, dedicating their lives in service to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Divine Comforter, you show compassion to those in need and provide relief to all who call on you. Bless all who suffer, Lord. We pray especially for those in our congregation. Clarice Olson, Joel Olson, Jack Flayton, Jim Anderson, Olivia Baldwin, Tom Beals, Ken Club, Monica Kennedy, Brad Madsen, Lauren Thome, Bonnie Westfield, Julie Miron, Marvin Nelson, Matt's Pat Saltness, Joey Anderson Ernest, John Perry Peterson, Vicki Groh, Patsy Legard, Elo Alois Ronning, Kathy Storleen, Jean Lee Herzog, and Mike Thompson, and our Providence friends John Lund, Arliss Buer, Doug Breberg, Dolores Windingstad, Evelyn Lundgren, Linda Tollickson, Dolores Peterson, Madeline and Wilton Gustafson, and Lucille Williams. And we give our sympathy, send our prayers of sympathy to the family of Lois Larson. Lord, Hear these prayers and all those names that we lift now aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. 
Sovereign God, this house of worship belongs to you. We give thanks and pray for our church musicians, especially Chris Laney. We dedicate to you the joyful noise that comes from this place, the cries of children, the melody of voice and instrument, and the songs from our heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift these prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. You may be seated for the offering. let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these things, through ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all thanks places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. You are indeed holy and merciful, almighty God. You are the most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. 
You so loved the world that you gave your only son that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. We remember in the night in which he was anointed by Mary of Bethany, he took the bread and he gave thanks and he gave it to all of his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of blood and bread and wine so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with the heavenly blessing and grace and receive the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be honor and glory in your holy church now and forever. Amen. Now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated and I invite our communion assistants forward.
you in his grace. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May he look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go in peace and serve the Lord.